Hello everyone, my name is Dave Podman and welcome to this tutorial on your Ionic with Firebase and uh, remember we're building the app FireBlogger. I uh, just want to use the tutorial to show you around a couple of things that doesn't really involve coding that you need to know. I have hosted this app on GitHub. So for some of you that are looking for the codes for this um, application here is the repos repository on github so what you have to do to get the codes is to visit github.com slash devozala that's my name slash fireblogger and then all of a sudden you'll have access to everything everything then i did a little um, write-up here on how to install it which is not difficult um, if, of course if you are good with github you already know what to do about it okay so the next thing, the only thing you can do for me on this uh, repository is to start it, okay? So don't forget to start it before you um, leave. All right, and then all uh, pull requests are welcome, so you can always um, fork it, include, uh, improve it, and uh, send a pull request. The next thing I want to let you know is that uh, you can follow me on GitHub. So when you click on my name, you can click on follow. So my name opens up and... Uh, you can click on follow the next thing I want to show you um, is a well before we go to that um, here is my profile on github and of course remember to click on uh, follow there should be a follow button here that will show click on follow all right next thing you want to do is um, basically I will show you how to download, how to convert your application into an APK because so far it seems we already have an interface or something, a skeleton of something we could just call an application. What if you wanted to run this on your, on your phone? Uh, the first step you want to take is to make sure that um, I'll, I'll press Ctrl C when your server is running. When you run Ionic Serve and you want to run something else, you press Ctrl C, Ctrl C twice. All right. Um, to run your, to convert your application into a an a dot apk, that is a file you can install on your mobile phone. What you have to do is, you run Ionic Build Android. If you're using an app, uh, if you're using iOS, I only build iOS. Okay, so um, I'm using Android mainly. So when you run this, what it does is it compiles your app into um, an APK you could use. Then it, it saves it into the folder of your project, so you can uh, actually manually copy the APK, send transfer to your phone via a USB cord and then um, start using it install it on your phone and start using it all right then secondly you can actually run this application directly on your phone um, for instance i want you to take note of this you can run this app application on your phone without having to install it first and then um, transfer to your phone and everything all you need to do is enable developer options in your phone i'll show you right now yes yeah, sure i'll show you in a minute so uh android build has run and we have this as you can see it has created the apk file so if we can take this file and install on our phone and then we have our software all right our mobile app so i'll you copy this Control c on your keyboard then it has copied this remember i copied from here so the next thing you'll do is open uh you you open any of your browsers any of your file explorer and paste it then you click enter so it takes you to this folder where it has built two um, apk files so there's the one you're looking for so remember this folder is in our file blogger platforms Android build outputs APK. So we can copy this actually and um, send to your phone. You can copy and send to your phone. 
it's it's that easy you understand you open up your phone here is my phone I can just open up my phone memory and um, paste all right so it's that simple the next thing I want to put you through is uh, that you can actually run this uh, application on your on your phone without having to go through the manual process what you do is um, Ionic run Android so when you run this it will automatically start the app on your phone it will install itself on your phone and start the app on your phone so you can just have your phone but you need to have your phone connected to your system via the USB so you connect it via the USB then you enable something called developer options so um, what you do is you basically google how to enable developer options is in your settings you google it how to to enable developer options in um, Android it's um, a little different for different Android versions so depending on the Android version you're using you can just say and I'm using 5.1 so you google it you'll see the fuse it's just a few still like three steps there's a place you could, you're going to tap seven times and some versions and then there you have it in the settings you click on developer options and then just follow the instructions and then make sure that developer options is enabled on your phone so when you run your android uh, ionic run android it will um, it will start the application in your phone the next thing I want to put you through is that this this all these commands may not run if you don't have your your Java installed Java installed in your system so definitely you will need um, something called JDK or just you need JDK in your system okay so to do that what you will do is you will go and search for um, download JDK. It will take you to Oracle's website where you can download JDK. I've downloaded it, so um, the options I'm seeing that will show for me in the in the website that will open might be different, a little different for you. So this is the software you're looking for. So you download and install this software in your system, and then you may need to restart after installation or may not depending on the configuration of your system so now you have your JDK the next thing you might need is Gradle is something called Gradle well 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 um, so here is it you can download it otherwise me uh, personally I just like to download uh, Android Studio. If you have Android Studio installed on your system, you don't need to download Gradle separately and stuff like that. What you just need is download your JDK. Um, forget about Gradle. It comes with um, Android Studio. Just download Android Studio. So you Google download Android Studio. Studio. Um, that is if you don't already have it installed or have another means of getting the Android Studio installed. I think you can get it via a CD. Um, you can get it via a CD. All right. So what you have here is a download Android Studio. I think it's about one gig. When this website opens, you will see it's around uh, 1.6 gig, almost two gig. All right. Uh, you download Android Studio or you install it via any means you can get used to get it. So once your Android Studio is installed, um, it comes with your emulator and a whole lot of other things you need. So that being done, there is something, some other trick that I use uh, to make sure that my app runs well on my phone. Which means if I connect my phone via a USB, uh, I don't need to be touching the phone. The phone will just show, the phone screen will just show up on my, on my PC and I'll start using it. This is what I mean. Um, this is what I mean. This is my phone screen right now. So as you can see, 
I'm using um, this Techno C8, that's the name of the phone. And the phone just went blank, so if I tap up my phone to bring it back on, as you can see, it's back on here. Uh, which means I can use my phone 100%, 100% without ever touching it. I can uh, enter my unlock pattern and everything, stuff like that. So, um, if you're running an app, once you run an um, Ionic build or Ionic run Android, run Android, your phone is an emulator and you click enter, it will install itself on your phone and you can see the application right here. All right. Uh, so the name of this uh, software is Visor and it's it's free. So um, I'm running it on the phone now, so it should pull up any moment from now. Okay, um, the name of the application is Visor, like I told you. Uh, to get it, you just have to say download Visor. It's, it's an extension on your Google Chrome browser. So as you can see, it's a Google Chrome ex extension. So one way to get it is to is to um, go to your apps and install it. So um, that's the way to uh, just go to your app, your uh, apps and install it. So this is my Google Chrome browser. At the extreme right, as you can see, there's a link here called apps. So I'll click on it. It opens all the apps I have installed on my Google Chrome browser. So when you go to the lower right corner of your screen, you'll see this link called Web Store. And you click on it, it opens uh, your Web Store, Chrome Web Store. So right here, um, I can download and install apps on my Chrome browser. So the, the app we're looking for is called Visor. Hit Enter. Then it shows up uh, these guys. Here's the visor we're looking for. So what you would do is to uh, click Add to Chrome. So I'm just going to use this as an example. I'll click Add to Chrome. It will ask you Add App. I've already installed it, so it's only asking me to wait. So once that's sorted out, as you can see, um, this is the new new app we installed. So that's how your visor will just show up on your screen, and that's all you need to do. Next time you want to run your application, you once you connect via USB, visor will pull up like this. This is my phone screen, and uh, my laptop is screen touch, so which means I can just I can even slide up my phone screen and do stuff like that. So when you are using Visor, I want you to know that Visor takes control of your keyboard. So your phone, if you're, if you're using Visor and you connect your phone via a USB to your system, and you try to type, and you get your physical phone and try to type something with your keyboard, it will not work. For you to get it to work, you have to click on Visor and um, set the keyboard to um, your normal keyboard. Otherwise, your phone's keyboard will not work until you unplug it from USB, but your laptop's keyboard will work. So this is the app we are having now and um, is running on my phone. That is how far we've gone. As you can see, this is how the app runs. Um, this is the app already running on my phone. So you can actually use your phone as an emulator and test out this app without having to uh, compile it, build it first, install and do stuff like that. All right, so Visa is very useful and very interesting. Then you can always get the pro feature. This is the, uh, the free feature. All right, so when you have all these things, um, development just becomes smooth and easy for you to do stuff. And um, the next thing I want to show you, assuming you don't want to install um, Android Studio, you don't want to install um, your Java JDK and stuff like that, you just you just want to run lean what you do is that you can actually compile your app into an android and ios app using something called build.phonegap.com so you visit build.phonegap.com and click on sign up then you sign in i've signed up when you sign in you will see a place where you can upload your um, project folder once you upload your project folder, everything is done. As you can see here, there's a free plan up to 50 MB. 
uh, max app size 50 MB and uh, that's what I use and it's quite it's easy free you upload your app the only catch to build.phonegap.com is that after your first app your subsequent apps you upload you must have to have it on github first so to, to use subsequent apps to compile subsequent apps to apk and uh, and the ios platform what you have to do is to host the app first of all on github then copy the url and uh, use it here all right so that's it for um, this tutorial see you in the next tutorial where we get right back into the code and do more stuff thank you see you